Okay, so today we have something very exciting. Um, I have been uh, doing some re reading up on um, OSL, which is called Open uh, Shada Language, and it was developed by Sony. And what it allows you to do is have full control, create a shader with full control using code. Uh, it's implemented in Octane and Redshift and probably the best implementation is in blend, is in uh, Blender Cycles, which is in Blender. And I think it's also, we can get, it's also included if you buy X particles and, um, it lets you basically use a programming language to design your, design a custom shader. Uh, I have, I'm going to include a link to the paper on it in the description, but let me show, this is a very simple example. We'll start here. This is with Octane. Now I should point out Octane's implementation is somewhat, is, is limited. Um, they don't have, um, I think they don't have closures and dictionaries and closures are basically function, uh, like methods and the data surrounding it that you can pass around to functions. So they just have straight color because the big, the only closure that is in the official language is color closure. Uh, let me show you, this is one of the shaders. And let me get it to go to the node editor here. So we can see. Now here is our OSL texture. Um, let me close these so you can see more of what well, that's gonna can't see too much. You know what I'm gonna do? I should add that Octane has their own uh, little lang uh, addition to it library. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to create a note, bring up notepad here and put it in here so you can see it because otherwise you will not be able to see it. Uh, paste. Okay, so this is very simple. We have two colors, A and B, and um, a U shift, and a noise. So what happens is, we're only using colors. We have um, NC, which is the noise, and I think this is the degree of noise this then we have the U shift. So we're going to take the original and then we're going to put our U shift in here and we're going to get a value. And then we're going to take that value and we're going to add the noise to it. So we're take we're changing the U, the U. We're creating a noise and we're adding to it. And that is what this, uh, make this, I'm going to move this out of the way. So this is what this cube here is. Now the other cube here is this one. And let's see what this one is. Uh, materials, materials. Here we go. This is this is a simple color. But let's look at the noise at the node editor here. And this is just simply adding two colors together. So this is the very, very simplest of ways of doing it. Um, but you can see how much control you can have because you can change any of these colors. You can make it in a gradient or a color, whatever it is, it's going to take it. 
and you can get whatever you you can also um keyframe them so very simple example now this was an octane again not quite as heavily supported not quite as well supported as redshift um we mentioned what a closure is so let's look at uh redshift first of all what i want to show you is this uh have a look at this this is on the redshift git github and you can see they have dozens and dozens of examples um that you can use and the one i picked to stop playing with was look at all these examples and this is this is all set out for you is this tool steel so the original i took the original file and then i added some color twist to it and then we'll discuss it in it but here is the tool steel they have the file and they have a picture so you can see what it looks like so this is our um text this is our code by the way if of course if you have github you can walk it over to your you make a copy in your account you can walk it over to your account so their implementation they do have cloture they also have this interesting thing to give you make more of a user interface here and basically what this does is it uses um micro it's basically setting you know how you in uh in reflective you can have ggx and you can have uh the one or two different things that you use this is for metal and they also add this thing for aces now i ran into some issues excuse me with their uh with the if statement i did have an example where it worked fine that it was very simple I cannot get that working in my bigger example. Not sure what's going on there. I'm going to have to play with that a little more. But this is the basic thing. And what I added to this is, well, we'll see. Let me go to that example. There we go. Now we have the right renderer. And you can see all the colors. So this, this basic one will just give you that one color. I wanted multicolors. So let's have a look at what I did here. Um, one thing to point out, and this can drive you nuts, because I decided to use the take system. You must, if you don't have main selected, you can't change anything. Everything is locked. Okay. Just be aware of that because um, if you, it, it can drive you crazy if, you, if you're not thinking about it. Uh, let's see here. Where are my materials? All right. So this is the metal color. And we got our... What? Come on. And this here is a little bit of code. It's kind of hidden because we have all the parameters that let you change how it, how the metal looks as well as the ones I added. Again, this one isn't quite working. Don't know why. Um, where, well, what I added also is this, uh, where did it go? It's all uh, extra, no. It is input. What I am using here is basically a color data node that because I have a cloner here, let's go back. Because I have a cloner here, what it's going to do is it will assign 
a separate, you get to choose how you want to separate everything. So I, a color, geometry ID color is assigned to each of the clones. That's passed into my code. And let's look at the code. Uh, let's see, OSL. Make this a little wider here. It's a little bit better editor. Again, you see the little the definitions. This defines all your inputs here, from here to here. I added this in to kind of change so we can change the values. Um, and this was from a different script that I forget where I found it, uh, where I borrowed this creating different color values. If we wanted to, we can we can change make this changeable as well. And what I did is I used the metal. I created the the ten color, and before I stuck it into these methods to turn it into a uh, the final output, I added my shifts right here. And now this is important. Out, you cannot set a out color. And the way you do it here, see, you have an out, you set an output variable. Out color is a clo color a cloture color, which as I mentioned, like a uh, method with the variables around them. So it's it's sort of like an object. Okay, so you can negate. You can multiply a color by a color closure or a float. You can add, you cannot add a color to a color closure. So this is what you're limited to. And the reason this, basically microfacet outputs a color closure. So you're multiplying a color by a color closure here. The other thing I did with the colors which gave me the interesting differences in colors is um, multiplied the two, the two. Uh, this I just said to zero. It would work if I said to zero. It's obviously not getting the one value for whatever reason or it's ignoring it or overriding it. But that's that's how I got this these different colored um, cubes. Now what happens with this, the way what this does, there is an animation here. And let's see. Yeah, this is you can see all the the movement of the pieces. Actually, it's probably better. Let's look at this across camera. And you can see everything moving. So that's the idea. And to do to do that, let me put this back. I mean, again, if it, it can drive you you nuts. If you're using the take system and you don't have this domain, you can't change anything. This allows you to, to use three different cameras and output three different uh, camera views that then you can put together. So here's my cloner. And I used a shader effector which um, I started looking at a video about this effective by E.J. E.J. Hasselfront. I have trouble pronouncing his last name, but he's, he's very, um, he, he actually teaches the cinema classes at School of Motion. He's a creative director. He does a lot, a lot. Very, very experienced, very smart guy. Um, anyway, 
So this lets you change things, uh, introduce some random move movement in your in your uh, in your piece. So they have two fields: a spherical field, which you can see will move moves across here, and gives you the movement. The random field actually provides some randomness in how much is how things are moved. And the shader, I'm saying that you can rotate it this way, this many. Um, not sure how much this is all doing, but you get the movement. And um, that is how I got the, how I got the movement in here. But again, the key thing is the, is this shader effect. And now this, another uh this is this is another osl object let me show you this this one show you the shader graph and this is where this is from the original one that this is where the color stuff comes from and this will give you the multicolors when you plug when you plug the uh as i did in this uh well Actually, you can see it in this this one here. Again, you can you're plugging in the color data from the cloner, and that's how you get all these multiple colors. But this is just one thing you can do. If you could take the, the what's provided by Redshift, you can do all sorts of things. Um, because they they have a Bet, uh, more advanced implementation than Octane. You can't just take those to go to Octane, but Octane does document what does not work. So you can take it and then change it up to work in in Octane if you're using an Octane, uh, Octane renderer. Now, that gets me to the final thing I want to discuss here, which is there is important, is if you, I have 300, 60 uh, frames here it would be really it would take me each frame was three minutes out now I tried to get it down I could probably do some more work on that but I knew I was not going to get it out in a reasonable amount of time if you run into that situation there is a little help out there it costs money but It'll get your renders out very quickly, um, and that's uh, render farms. There are many render farms, and um, now I'm talking. Now I did Redshift. I can. Um, I will talk about another option you have if you're using Octane, but I, I decided I want to get this out. I want to be able to show people. So I went to a render farm, and the one I ended up using was GarageNet. They, you may be able to find cheaper ones. Um, some of the other ones I looked at, like Rebus and the font, some of the other ones listed as top render farms were m more expensive. But GarageNet gives you, it's a little tricky the first time. I got help um because i ran into some problems i got help on one of the support people they have 24 7 support and this gentleman spent quite a bit of time online with me until i got it going once you do it once everything will make sense and it's pretty easy basically what you have to do is export it your your scene is um as a bunch of .rs files, as like we've seen before when we were going from Houdini to uh, Cinema 4D, and we want to preserve what we did in Houdini in terms of texturing and so forth, you do the same thing out of Cinema, and you you bring that first app first. You you click on the first um, file in your list, you know, in your frames. And you send, they have an app that you put on an app and a plugin that you install. You can install plugins for whatever you're using, like Redshift 
has its own. That's separate from Cinema. Cinema's plugin is designed for their built-in render. It's not for Redshift. So you give it the red. You use the Redshift plugin. You give it its information, and you I mean you upload it, and then it comes up, and you verify everything, and you can also set it on test which will put out a few files so you can look at them before you commit because each, these were three minute per frame, each of them cost about seven to 10 cents and if you do 360 frames, you can do the math. It's not cheap. I had credit so it didn't hardly cost me anything today. But it's something, this is something that you would use when you, you're under a time pressure or maybe your system is, you know, you're using a laptop that's not quite strong enough to render out your, your creation. Um, so that's, that's the, the, when you would need to use it. Very important, keep, if the, the faster you can, you can, if you, if you can get the settings to get each frame out, the quicker it gets the frame, each frame out, the less expensive it's going to be because it's charged by how much computing power you use. So if each frame is three minutes, it's going to take more than if you are, if it take than if you're saying take one minute. Okay, that's that's something you really need to be aware of, and um, so make sure you do that. You take care of that. If you're going to use this option um so and i'm there are many many render um many many render farms and you choose the one that's best for you uh i can tell you i use garage net today and it worked for me uh but it does it does cost money another option if you're using octane if they have the rn Render network. Supposed to allow for Redshift. They talked about that two years ago, but I don't think it's there yet. I, I don't see any evidence that it's in there. I don't see any evidence that it's coming shortly. So I don't know what the story is on that. But if you're using Octane, you output to an, um, an OBX file. I think this is, so what you would do, file, I think... Uh, I don't know if you can, where you, oh, you do it, I believe, let's go back to, uh, Octane, I believe you do it from, maybe here, yeah, you can package it as a Orbix. Or if you have animation, see they give you these options. This is how you would send it up, and we we can do a video on that um, because and I if I recall I used it once, it was quite a bit cheaper. I think it was only a few dollars to render a big scene, um, so it's not gonna it's it's much more. From my recollection, it's much more budget friendly than a render fawn. Like I said, a render form is what you use when you you don't have the option to do it locally. And a lot of um, people who have their own, you know, who do this for a living, some of them will set up their own, you know, get extra machines so that, you know, have a separate machine that is just geared for rendering. Because you've got two problems when you're rendering. Problem number one is that you um you can't use your your machine at that point and problem number two is it can take a very long time in some situations so you're not only waiting but you you have no use of your machine you can't carry on working on other things render farms render network these sorts of options solve both, both of these problems by it's getting done on a different machine, it's getting done a lot faster, 
but for a price. So I want to mention that. So again, um, I, I think there is a lot to be said about these, this uh, OSL, these OSL textures. Um, and this, what I did today here only scratches the surface. I mean, you know, very simple. And if you're, if you're a coder, it's, it's a pretty standard looking language. I mean, it has different things, but, um, it, it's not something if you've done C or Java, that's going to be alien to you, if you will. If you're not a coder, Redshift, you know, you can find scripts to do what you want in many cases, and you won't have to, um, uh, what did I do? Oh, I tried to add a different, like, this is the bump. I don't know how, if it did anything. Um, if you, um, you know, you can find other scripts that will do exactly what it is you want or close to it. And again, the advantages, it gives you a lot of flexibility. You can change parameters. You don't have to make a whole new shader. You just take the shader you have and you change the parameters to get the look that you want. Um, you know, from the parameters right here. So anyway, hopefully this has been helpful. Uh, thank you for watching. And uh, if you have any questions, you know, put them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. Um, if, you, if you're new to the channel, it's, it's helpful. You know, if you want to see more of this stuff, subscribe. And uh, you will be notified, of course when uh, new videos come out and uh, I will thank you and I'll speak to you next time. Take care.